Well, <clears throat> here we are again. <laughs> Here's the goggles, and um, yeah, this is a little different. We've got the uh, we're in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, and we've got the um, uh, Penga. Oh, what do you call it again? The Kozad uh, articulated trailer here. It's got rear steer on it. And uh, interesting thing about that trailer is, well, obviously the back truck steers, which is a good thing, makes it pretty maneuverable. But uh, as you can look down the trailer there, you see that arch in it. And we're going to see, we're just going to go over here and pick up the load and we'll see that arch flatten out. Which is kind of a cool thing. It's a neat feature. So anyway, it's, uh, let's get started on this journey. Just got to go right around the corner here to start to pick up. It's 1 a.m. in the morning here. I guess the uh, time of year we've got the midnight sun thing going on. Turn left. So I thought I would start late like this, or early, early morning, so the sun should be coming up a little bit when we start getting into the meat You've of this thing. Your destination. That may have goofed. It's pretty hard to see right now. <laughs> see what happens by the time we get loaded here. <clears throat> All right, let's take that job to Wasilla. And where do we got to go? Up ahead here, somewhere in the gloom. We should be able to remember this basic yard shape from... Uh, Oh yeah, there we are. Just gonna have to duck around this loading ramp. Now it should rear steer around there pretty handily, so we'll cut her in now. Not that we can really tell what's going on back there, but that should have worked. Doesn't feel like we hit anything. And it's tucking in nicely. I thought. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, get loaded. May have to do this in the several parts. I'm not sure how long it's going to take us to get to Wasilla. Oh, darn, it's still gloomy out. So I've got the, uh, see the trailer's flattened out now with the load on. I've got the, on the truck, I've got the Nitro Mods tire chains on. And that makes a difference when you're up here on this route because uh, without them, uh, it's like you're driving in molasses, like the thing just doesn't want to go, so it gives you a bit of a, which is kind of weird, because I mean, I've driven, I'm in the north here, I've driven lots in the snow and in winter, and you don't necessarily go slower, and if you do, you're losing traction, but when it's cold out and everything else, you can just rip right along, it's fine. Um, obviously, you don't have the lateral grip, but... Uh, it's uh, this business of driving Laker in molasses because it's snowy out is kind of one of my beefs with this uh, mod, map mod. Anyway, well, we can't see uh, much anything here. <laughs> Lights really aren't picking up anything on the road. Well, we'll see how we do. Is 
brightening up a bit though. Somebody coming the other way here. After 100 yards, turn right. Oh, that's not it. The thing with this Sea uh, <coughs> Mods, uh, Lori Voice Navigator, she doesn't always call out the distance accurately. Turn right. Sometimes she'll say 100 yards. It's 25 and she'll say 50 and it's 100. That vent, vent window frame gets kind of in the way of the view, mirror view there. Oh, this isn't the route. See? She said turn right. I turn right. I'm not on the road. My God. Okay, reset. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, reset myself on the road here just where she wanted me to turn. Yeah, this looks much better. It's got the markers. And I should have known better, better than to turn down there on that turn right command. But You kind of got to pay attention to your map uh, on this um, this drive because uh, it'll give you a heads up as to what's coming. You know, if you're going to turn and what kind of curve it is because uh, you get very little notice when it's murky like this. And those uh, markers you can see on the right and left become really handy here when. Uh, just quite often happens on this road you get a whiteout situation. You can see we got a fairly sharp right turn coming up here. It's a narrow road. And there's quite likely to be somebody coming the other way at some point here. You just can't tell. <laughs> but fortunately the AI stops if you're in their lane. I think the load is 121,000 pounds. I was having problems uh, with my game crashing and I kind of tracked it down to Truckee and I've disabled Truckee so we don't have that benefit of Truckee telling us uh, what the weight is and various other things that are handy. To, uh, when you, on this route if you want to get to your destination on time when you can you got to make speed because uh, there's lots of times you can't get going it's a long hill or whatever else and you'll end up with uh, you'll be late so here comes the snow now we got to start looking for those markers It's DD60 in here. This is my heavy haul version. My big gun. There's a 
pit coming up, uh, not too far from it, where uh, there's uh, open water. You have to splash your way through. And we're pretty much got her pinned here. This is all it's got. So I've got to watch for those uh, markers on the side to come closer on the right and further away on the left. I've actually driven in conditions like this on numerous occasions in real life. And it's uh, pretty hair raising. Of course, I wouldn't try and go quite this fast, but uh, put a little bit of a bend to the left here. tried this without the tire mods and uh, a lesser horsepower motor like I've tried it with um, even with this engine which is uh, my thousand horsepower mod at 3660 foot pounds of torque with this engine and no tire chains I would be going about between 20 and 25 miles an hour right now some reason you know, they, and it's not like you're spinning the tires it's just not going it was just bogging down like you're in molasses like I said earlier so a little different okay here comes the uh, open bit I think coming up so this is supposed to represent can't really see it the lights are really bad but that's open water right there it's gonna be a Kenworth and a flat deck off in the ditch on the right here momentarily uh, right there uh, hard to tell where we're going <laughs> there's somebody waiting for us to get out of their way but it is lightening up now so that's nice Driving once with my uh, first Louisville, my first L8000 Ford, that load of uh, stuffing box oil for pump jacks on the back on my flat deck, and I was um, typically that's so that's nor uh, on the Alberta Saskatchewan border where I'd be taking that north, and um, I had always you know. I'd always leave really early in the morning, like maybe 1 or 2 in the morning, so I'd get there at 8 a.m., which is what the, the customer always wanted. You know, be here at 8 a.m. so we can offload. And, and, uh, and I'd get the empties on and bring them back, be back in the city by late afternoon. So anyway, long story short, I'm driving up there. It's the middle of winter, and uh, really bad weather, cold, blowing snow from the west to east and I was on a west-east road 
uh, I was driving from west to east, and uh, so the wind at my back, and the the snow was drifting down the road the direction I was going. So instead of like we're seeing here with this cross effect on the snow, it was coming from it was going down the road with me, and uh, it was making long ridges in the road, uh, deepish snow or whatever. But yeah, I was okay. I was just motoring through it, doing pretty good, and. When I got to my next 90 degree turn heading north, so I was going across the drifts. Uh, there was like bare pavement drifts, bare pavement drifts. And it was just pounding on the truck. It was really rough, miserable. And I, you know, I was slowed down so as not to damage anything or shake the load off the deck. And uh, what ended up, uh, I noticed my mirror. I, I caught a flash every now and then, like a, a light went off or something under the truck, and I'm thinking, oh, what the heck is that? And uh, I caught a really good look at it, and I, I thought, oh, okay, something's dragging under the truck. I I pull off, and bear in mind, it's like minus 25-something Celsius and blowing like this here at the cross, and uh, on a clear stretch of pavement, I pulled over got under the truck to have a look what the heck was going on and those old Louisville's had a transfer fuel line between the fuel tanks so it didn't feed from each tank to the front it fed from one tank across the truck to the other and then to the front and um, there's a angle sort of piece of angle iron that's rubber mounted on each side and the fuel line the cross line goes is mounted inside that angle to protect it from the road but it's uh, really low to the ground and the drifts had knocked the rubber off and the angle itself had the ties that held it to the fuel line the zip ties or whatever they were broke broke and that angle was angle iron was dragging back behind the truck and sparking on the pavement when I would hit pavement the fuel line was dangling probably six inches off the ground and you know getting pounded by the snow <laughs> I hate to think of you know what would have happened if I didn't stop as soon as I did I just used some bungees I had to tie it up and uh, rip the uh, rip the mount off the other side of that piece that rubber mounted bracket and for the rest of the time I had that truck I just kept those that fuel line tied up like that but uh, holy mackerel what a you know goofy scenario that was but uh, and that that was it wasn't as bad as what we just had back there at the whiteout but it was close but what's worse is uh, you know fog and winter at the same time fog's bad enough in the summer but when it's foggy in the winter and you're out in the north and the uh, you're on snow and stuff the fog means it's usually at a temperature where uh, it's a fairly warm temperature in relative terms and it means the snow is really slippery at least when I had that issue with the fuel line it was really cold and when it's really cold you've got traction Well, relatively speaking, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, a lot better than it is when it's getting near freezing. Snow when it's near freezing is terrible. But enough about that, we're going to be able to start seeing some scenery here pretty soon. stop on the road up here called Coldfoot and uh, it's a fuel stop. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'll maybe stop there and make it part one. Oh, this guy had a bit of bother. But yeah, not too, uh, before too much longer we'll pick up the uh, Alaska pipeline. Which is kind of cool.
Oh, this is the uh, CMT, CTTM or CMMT, I keep forgetting which way that goes. W900A. C1 DD60, I think I mentioned. The Nitro Mods tire chains. And we're, let me think, yeah, we're running. Uh, JBX graphics, which doesn't work with the uh, Grimes Snowy Winter, but uh, seems to work fine here. It's the first time I've tried it up here. There's the Alaska Pipeline. You guys are into watching documentaries on. Uh, YouTube, there's a pretty cool one where they, uh, I mean, they did the defense early warning system. I guess it was in the 50s. Up, uh, I guess, I'm not sure where it started, if it was in Alaska. I think so. I think it was across the, across the Canadian Arctic. And they had a series of specially made Mack off road trucks uh, to haul the trailers of equipment, like cement. All the sort of things they needed to set up this defense early warning radar system. All the construction equipment. That's a pretty fascinating video. Um, if you want to see some trucks driving in difficult conditions, that would be the one to watch. What I'll do is before I uh, edit and post this video, I'll see if I can find a link to that video and I'll put it in uh, the link at the bottom of this description. If you're into the old, old stuff and see how things were, and they just didn't have the capability to airlift stuff everywhere, how they got things done up here was, was pretty good. Hey, is there a helicopter in my mirror? No, well, there's nothing there. Hey, now we can see this uh, setup. Tire chains. The, the tire chains you have to use stock wheels. So I'm just using the uh, Seagull chromes there. Oh, shit, have those beacons on. There we go. But the uh, scenery is pretty cool here. That's my, oh yeah, I probably recognize my Alberta heavy haul uh, skin on this truck. That's what I really like. Hospital, well, <laughs> if that's how you pronounce it, terrain. Inhospitable? Uh, maybe that's how that goes. Should have breathed the throttle for that bump. start getting into some hills. Look at the scenery. Nice job on the mountains. And this is a Lieber crane, I believe. Yeah, a Lieber. Now some of these corners, you got to watch them because uh, get a bit understeer on them as it tries to plow itself off the road, but 
seem to be okay right here. Uh, there's a little bit of plowing. Understeer. My friend uh, Matt from New Zealand, he calls it sledging. <laughs> when you understeer. Is that a Kiwi term? Pipeline pops out of the ground again here. That's pretty cool. I wonder how the uh, compensate for the expansion and contraction of a welded structure that long. It must have uh, slip joints in it somewhere because you think there would be a lot of expanding and contracting like over distance it would be pretty huge. I don't know much about the weather up here uh, at uh, Prudhoe Bay, but it's not going to be a bajillion degrees below zero all the time. been able to make the speed limit very briefly here. There hasn't been a lot of it. Yeah, we're getting a bit understeer there too. It gets really bad when we get down into the trees and the road gets, gets windy here. Get a lot of understeer in there, of course. Yeah, I have chains on, thanks for the warning. It's pretty funny, you know that bit back there when we were going through the um, the sort of whiteout. Uh, I was up there once, and it wasn't the foggy kind of white. It was just like snow, and uh, it was like they were emulating a really big blizzard. And uh, a Mustang convertible goes by the other way with the top-down <laughs> AI traffic. That uh, was pretty funny. Now this little rise up ahead doesn't look like much from here, but I think this is one of the, maybe this is it, I'm not sure. It's one of the more difficult parts. Not sure, yeah, it could be it. Scenery, eh? I don't know, this isn't it. This isn't the hard part yet. shot. <laughs> Sorry guys. Yeah, 
this, this is the, I think this is the hill that's a little problematic. So how we deal with it. a little bit. I haven't tried to just keep my foot planted when it's like this because uh, I'm not sure if it would just spin and stop, which is what would happen in real life, of course. Yeah, I used to use chains with grocers on them. They're really aggressive. And, uh, <laughs> the only thing with those is, uh, and especially if you have the diff locks on, you have, well, you have to turn the diff lock off to go around a corner like this, or else it would just go straight. And, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. Yeah, this is the biggest climb we're going to, not the biggest climb in the map, but the uh, probably the most difficult did pretty well here. Got over it without much, not much drama. Now we can pick up speed here pretty quickly. We gotta watch this bottom corner. There's the trees up ahead. The tree line, I guess. Yeah, it's interesting because um, this is the first time I've come up here where there wasn't darkness. And I was trying to figure out a good time to set the, uh, use a dev console and set time to for the trip. Uh, so we didn't end up driving in the dark. And I started at like 7 in the morning. It was bright out. I kept going back by the hour until I went all the way back to 8 p.m. the previous evening, I guess. Well, you're not really going back in time. You, I think it jumps ahead. So if you set it back an hour, you're really jumping ahead 23, but whatever. Uh, when I got back to 8 p.m., it was still light. And so... I set this one to start at 1 a.m. And, uh, yeah, but with a truck, you have no way of knowing what uh, time of day it is right now. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, my little panel here says 10.20 a.m., so we're doing all right. Let's uh, jump in the cab for a bit here. Can't quite make it out behind the fan. I got my uh, Alberta Heavy Haul air freshener there. <laughs> uh, that's the Sissel's customization uh, mod. That's just a typical thing. You just do it in paint.net.
we're supposed to get more snow this weekend. We had a little over the last couple of days, so nothing serious, but I think we're going to get a little more where I live here tomorrow. Sunday, too, maybe. up for a minute and see. Yeah, there's cold foot, so we get there we'll call it part one. Yeah, this is supposed to go to one of those, uh, you know, uh, forestry sites like Deep Grove. Uh, I think I, ha I have the uh, company's mod on, so it's called Rustic. But I sure hope it's it's by Wasilla. I sure hope it's not the logging site, because uh, I don't know how, if it's even possible to get this trailer in there. We'll see. It'll be an interesting finish to this <laughs> this trip. Yeah, so we're coming up to Coldfoot here. Without uh, tire chains uh, on a really big load, like with a Nitromods Rackley, I would uh, I would get to this would be a, a one sleep cycle in the game just to get this far. Shows you what a difference these tire uh, chains make. Go straight. Sorry, Lori. I'm gonna change a plan. Watch this trailer steer in here. It'll be pretty cool. See that? That's really neat. I really like this trailer in cities. Yeah, I'll try and uh, find a link to that uh, uh, expedition in the Arctic with the, uh, using the Mack trucks. It's a uh, pretty interesting documentary. Of course, it's produced by Mack, so, you know, all the companies used to do it back in the day with the, uh, their, uh, what do you call it, promotional things, but it's worth watching. So, if, if you like history and, and, well, trucks in general, you'll enjoy it, so... Anyway, guys, um, we'll make this part one. We'll end. Uh, we'll stop here and uh, carry on next day with part two. And thanks for riding along. And uh, hope you enjoyed it so far. And uh, cheers for now. Talk to you later. Bye.